most people do think of water safety in those summer months, but the reality is that children do die as a result of drowning or are left disabled as a result of near drownings year round. So we're really encouraging people to think of water safety as a year round issue. So we often think of death, obviously, as a drowning. Well, what are some of the real serious consequences of near drowning? Well, sadly, for every child that dies as a result of drowning, there's at least another four that are, uh, are admitted to hospital as a result of near drownings and around a quarter of those will be left with a brain injury that leaves them with some form of disability for life. So um, when we hear the headline drowning rates, sadly there's a much bigger picture behind that. And why this particular age group? Well, not to four-year-olds are particularly at risk and we find that up to age one, um, children tend to drown in bathtubs, unfortunately. Um, once they get to that one to four-year-old, um, they become mobile and they're exploring the world and as any parent will tell you, you only have to turn your head for a minute and your child's out of sight and the water's attractive to them. It's an environment that they have fun in, um, so they're naturally attracted to it and unfortunately we have this uh, by drowning rate. So what can parents do, what can kids do to protect their safety? Well, there's a lot of things that uh, parents can do. Obviously, adult supervision is the number one tool that's available to us. But making sure they have effective barriers to stop children getting to water sources. So yes. don't leave bathtubs full, make sure that pool gates are closed, that pools are fenced, um, that they get their children enrolled in learn to swim lessons, and that their parents also learn the skills that they need in an emergency. So go and enrol in a CPR course so that if something goes wrong, you know what to do. And you've been traveling around the country and talking to Unfortunately, many of the stories are the same. It's exactly that a child's got out of their sight momentarily and has found their way to the water. And unfortunately, as a result, they are now living with a child with severe disabilities. Um, I, I have been travelling, and my specific journey coming to Columbia uh, was to visit Jim Riser and to have a look at his Water Smart 101 program, um, specifically educating children in those very early age groups to be aware of the risks of water themselves and to do, undertake some lessons um, to make themselves more aware and more safe around the water, and material that goes home to their parents to encourage their parents to take on board those safety lessons as well. And last question, how effective is the program? Uh, highly effective. That's one of the reasons I'm here. It's one of the most innovative programs that I was able to identify, um, which is the purpose that I've come to Columbia on this trip, was to meet Jim and to learn the lessons from him, to take those back to Australia and implement those and get education in place very early in a child's uh, in a child's life to make them as safe as we can. Is there a particular continent or country or region of the world where drowning stats are higher or drowning rates are higher? Um, drowning is a global phenomenon. Um, in Western societies, it does tend to be associated with a lot of those recreational water activities. In developing countries, we do have a lot of issues around drowning in open waterways. There's some great innovative programs being done by organisations all around the world. But the sad reality is the drowning numbers are still way too high and it's going to take a, a very concerted and cooperative effort from lots of organisations working together to solve this problem. So there's no place that's higher than the number or the highest, would you say? Uh, it varies from place to place and even within the United States we know um, the NDPA put out a top list of five states with the highest drowning rates uh, just recently. Of course, I don't know those off the top of my head because it's not my uh, area. Um, but certainly at home, the states that do tend to be warmer with greater water resources available to them uh, obviously create more opportunities for the children to get into trouble.